वेलकम टू पार्ट थ्री ऑफ एस सी नाइन हंड्रेड प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट एक्सप्लेन इन माई वीडियोज प्लीज डोंट मेमोराइज एंड अपियर इन द एग्जाम बिकॉज यू विल हैव हार्ड टाइम पासिंग दिस एग्जाम और राइट दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू रेस्ट्रिक्टिंग कंटेंट लेट्स लुक एट ऑप्शन ए दैट इज एज अ पॉलिसी एज अ पॉलिसी इज अ डिफॉल्ट अलाउ एंड एक्सप्लिसिट डिनाई सिस्टम सीम्स इन करेक्ट एज क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट माइक्रोसॉफ्ट थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव फ्यूचर विच इज रिलेटेड टू ई मेल्स राइट Hence, we'll reject this. Let's look at option B. That is conditional access policies. Conditional access policies are if-then statements, which is related with MFA. This seems again incorrect. Hence, we'll reject this as well. Let's look at option C. That is data loss prevention policy. Seems interesting because data loss prevention policy is a Microsoft 365 feature as well. as per the question and it can be used to restrict content and prevent from sending emails as well this can be the potential answer we'll keep this option aside let's look at option d still that is retention policy retention policy is related to backups right we need policy which is related to emails as per the question hence we'll reject option d and if you look at the official documentation under dlp that is data loss prevention policy that it restrict content with prevent the warning to the users like this is the warning to the user very good example in the official documentation which prevents them from sending an email hence in the interest of time we'll lock c as the correct answer for this okay this seems to be a unique and interesting question as it's related to external users from partner organization let's look at option a that is conditional access policy conditional access policies are if then statement we saw in the previous question as well seems incorrect because it doesn't fit our requirement let's look at option b that is azure edfs edfs is related to single sign ons to websites and services seems incorrect as in the question there is no mention of single sign ons hence we can straight away reject this as well let's look at option c and d seems interesting because both look similar only difference is b2b and b2c one letter difference right let's still look at option c first that is b2b collaboration b2b collaboration can be the potential answer as it allows cross organizational collaboration such as vendors or partners in an application from an identity standpoint we'll keep this option aside let's look at option d still that is b2c b2c is an independent service for building a consumer application id repository If you need a service to handle email, Facebook login, then this is for you. But in the question, it's something else. Hence, we can reject this as it doesn't satisfy our requirement. If you look at the official documentation, B two B collaboration organization can enable external users from partner organization to use their own credential. We got our answer. Hence, we'll lock this. All right. If you're already into security, then this should be a piece of cake because encryption and trust is a very basics. Quick tip for the exam: Whenever you see questions related to encryption and trust, storage services should strike in your mind. Let's look at option A, that is VM Data Disk. Since VM Data Disk is a storage service, we'll park this option aside for the timing as we need two correct answers. Let's look at option B, that is HTTP connection. HTTP connection uses transport layer security, also known as TLS. less or ssl to encrypt communication seems again incorrect we'll reject this let's look at option c that is azure files azure files support server side encryption at rest seems another valid answer seems like we got a two answer let's still look at option d that is rdp sessions data in transit over the network in rdp session is protected by tls seems again incorrect we'll reject this and if you look at the official documentation encryption at rest that is data disk is there one of the option and if you look at the second option that is azure storage services all the azure storage services are supported that is blob storage queue storage table storage as well as azure files that is they support server side encryption at rest we got our answer and we'll lock this if you like the way i explain please hit the thumbs up button because lot of hard work goes in behind the scenes and i am providing everything for free just because of your love and support all right this question is related to sensitivity levels let's look at option d that is archiving files option there's no option to archive files since the purpose of sensitivity levels is something else hence this is an incorrect choice we'll reject this Let's look at option A now that is trademarks to documents trademark is completely off topic sensitivity levels is related to adding watermarks and not trademarks hence this seems to be incorrect between B and C we got to select one correct answer both are related to watermarks 
and one is correct and another is incorrect. Watermarks can be applied to documents and not to emails. Hence, we'll keep option B and reject option C. And if you look at the official documentation that is clearly written, watermarks can be applied to documents but not emails. Hence, we got our answer and we'll log this. All right, another question related to sensitivity levels. If you paid close attention to last question, then this should be piece of cake for you. And this is very important with respect to exam. I need you to clear up the concept of sensitivity levels. Let's look at statement one that is using sensitivity levels. Watermarks can be added to documents. Seems true as watermarks can be added to documents. We saw this in the official documentation in the previous question. Hence, we'll mark this as true. Let's look at statement two that is using sensitivity levels. Watermarks can be added to emails. Seems false as watermarks cannot be added to emails. Hence, we'll mark this as false. Let's look at statement three that is sensitivity labels can be applied manually or automatically. Seems true as users can add watermarks automatically when a condition is met in addition to manually doing a task. If you look at the official documentation, a label can be assigned manually by the user. Manual thing is obviously there and as well as you can automate the thing by meeting some specific condition which you can configure and hence we'll lock these as the correct answer for this. All right, this question is related to recommended actions that can help reduce risk around data protection and regulatory standards. Let's look at option A and D together. There is no such thing as progress score or regulatory score seems just a distractor hence we can straight away reject option A and D together. Let's look at option C now that is compliance score. Compliance score can be used to measure progress to mitigate the risk related to regulatory standards. This can be the potential answer. Let's look at option B secure score. Secure score is a measurement of an organization's security posture with a higher number indicating more improvement actions taken. This seems incorrect. We'll reject this. And before arriving at the correct answer, let's support my answer with official documentation. Compliance score measures your progress in completing recommended action that help reduce risk around data protection and regulatory standards. We got our answer. Hence, we'll log this. All right. This question is related to shared responsibility model. You got to be clear about the concept. I have explained this in in depth in AZ900. But as a security administrator, you got to still be clear about the concept. Let's look at option A that is customer data. Maintaining customer data is the responsibility of the customer and not the cloud provider. Whether you want to delete the data or keep it completely up to you. Hence, we can reject this option. Let's look at option B that is physical security. Seems true as customer has no access over physical security like doors, data centers, etc. We'll keep this option aside for the time being and just for exam tip, always remember physical things like physical hardware or physical security. You don't have control over this. This is completely cloud providers responsibility. Let's look at option C still that is network traffic protection. Network traffic protection is like encryption, integrity or identity is completely dependent on the customer. Seems again incorrect, hence we'll reject this. Let's look at option D that is firewall configuration. How to or whether to not or whether you want a firewall is again customer's responsibility. Hence we'll reject this option as well. If you look at the official documentation, physical security is one responsibility that is wholly Yes, you got it right. It's wholly owned by cloud service provider when using cloud computing. This seems easy, right? To remember, hence we'll lock B as the correct answer for this. All right, this question is related to reviewing user access. Seems interesting. Let's look at option B for now. That is PIM, Privileged Identity Management. PIM is associated with time-bound access or just-in-time access. Question is about removing users as well, right? We got to remove some users who don't require group membership, which PIM can't satisfy. Hence, we'll reject option B. Let's look at option C, that is managed identities. Common challenges for developers is the management of secrets and credential used to secure communication between different components making up a solution. Managed identities eliminates the need for developers to manage credentials. Since the purpose of managed identities is something else, hence we can straight away reject this option as well. Let's look at option D, that is conditional access policy. Conditional access policies are if then statements. Conditional access policies can't be used to remove users who don't require membership. For this, you need some special kind of review, which option A satisfies that is called access reviews. And if you look at the official documentation, users access can be reviewed 
on regular basis to make sure only the right people have continued access. We got our answer and we'll log this. All right, this question is related to segregation of alerts with similar type. Let's look at option A that is threat intelligence report. Threat intelligence report is used to determine attackers objectives like tactics seems incorrect. We'll reject this. Let's look at option B for now that is security alerts. Security alerts are the notification that Defender for Cloud generates when it detects threats on the resources. This has nothing to do with aggregation as per the question. Hence, we can reject B as well. Let's look at option C that is security incident. Security incident is related to aggregation of alerts for SIEM attack. We'll keep this option aside. Let's look at option D still that is logic apps. Logic apps are serverless. Definitely they can help in automating the task. But by the definition of logic apps, it's more related to automating rather than aggregating as per the question we need. Hence, we can reject option D. And if we look at the official documentation for security incident in Defender for Cloud, a security incident is an aggregation. We got our keyword of all alerts for resources that align with kill chain pattern that is similar patterns we need and hence we'll lock C as the correct answer for this. All right, we got another true and false and it's related to Microsoft Secure Score. Very important topic with respect to exam, you got to be prepared. Let's look at statement one that is addressing the improvement action with third party application or software or an alternate mitigation gives secure score points. Seems true as Microsoft Secure Score awards points for improvement with third party applications. Hence, we can mark this as true. Let's look at second statement that is secure score helps organization on the current state of the organization's security posture. This seems again true. That's what secure score is meant for, right? This is the definition of it. Hence, we can mark is as true as well. Let's look at last statement that is Secure score helps organization comparing with benchmarks and establish key performance indicator that is known as KPI as well. Secure score also helps compare score of similar organization like yours and provide with benchmarks. This seems again true. And before locking, if you look at the official documentation, you are given points for addressing improvements with respect to third party application or software or alternate mitigation and secure score helps to report on current state, the organization security posture. This is the basic definition of it. Compare with benchmarks and stabilize key performance indicator. We got our options and hence we'll log this. And please, please, please don't go away. If you like my effort, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon because I regularly upload videos related to high paying ID certification, which will boost your IT career.